Today I'm sharing with you a garden fresh dill zucchini relish and of course it's fermented because that's what I love to do. So this zucchini relish is not only happiness to the taste buds but a probiotic nutritious food as well that can replace the relish you typically use on your burger or use it as an addition to a sandwich or atop a salad. And truthfully, when I taste tested mine, I ended up eating half the jar by the spoonful. It was so good, I could not help myself. So my taste test turned into a little bit of a snack, but that's a good sign that this fermentation recipe is worth making. Let's get started. This is going to be a dill relish and not a sweet one. And I'm making it with garden fresh veggies since it's that time of year. But these are all really common ingredients that you can buy from a store if you don't have a garden or if it's not garden season. This recipe makes three pint jars. Here's a review of the ingredients we'll be needing for this recipe. Zucchini, red bell pepper, onion, garlic, fresh lime, fresh dill, dill seed, mustard seed, bay leaves, and natural salt. Optionally, you can add some red chili flakes if you want to add a little kick, but it's not required. We'll need about two pounds of chopped zucchini. If you don't have a scale, that's approximately seven cups. Chop it up as small as you can. This is the size I chop mine, which is on the bigger chunk size, but if you can do smaller and not slice your fingers, go for it. Place it in a bowl and now we're gonna add the salt to get the juice forming. I'm using this pink Himalayan salt, but any natural salt will work. Just avoid using table salt since the added iodine, bleaching, and anti-caking agents in table salt can interfere with fermentation. Kosher salt is also okay, just so long as it is a pure salt. Just read the ingredients and make sure it says salt and nothing else. Sprinkle one tablespoon of salt over top the two pounds of zucchini. Then give it a toss with your washed clean hands to incorporate it. This method is called dry salting. Instead of pre-making a salt water solution that is poured over top the vegetable once it's inside the jar, the vegetable instead makes its own brine. The salt we just sprinkled over the zucchini will begin working to draw off that water from the vegetable, hence creating a salty zucchini juice, which will be used as the brine for this ferment. The salt will be doing its job on the zucchini while we prepare the other ingredients. Next, add one half cup of chopped red bell pepper. I found it helpful to take a clean spoon and mix it in. This way you can jump back and forth from mixing to chopping without having to stop to wash your hands each time. Next, we'll add the onion. Peel the waxy outer shell off first, then chop it up. We'll need about one fourth cup. Chop it up as fine as you can and then mix it in. Mince up the best you can one half teaspoon of garlic. Add it to the bowl and mix it in. Now, garlic is one of those flavors that can get too strong too fast, especially in fermentation, which is why I'm going light. I didn't measure out how much fresh dill to use exactly, so just use a handful, and you can of course use more than this. Cut it up and add it to the bowl, and you guessed it, mix it up. Now it's time to add the seasonings. Start with one and a half teaspoons of fresh crushed dill seeds. By crushing them just before adding them to the fermentation, the polyphenols and the other nutrients will be released and bioactive. Plus, the flavor will be so much more zesty and alive than just with the whole seed. However, with the mustard seed we're now gonna add, we wanna keep it on the mild side, so we're not gonna crush it, but rather keep it whole since it can be like garlic and quickly become too powerful if broken open or if too much is used. Add about one teaspoon. Isn't this looking absolutely gorgeous? Optionally, if you like a little spice kick, add one to two teaspoons of red chili flake, depending on how much of a spice kick is to your liking. If you wanna skip the spice, then leave the chili flakes out. Now, I admittedly am a spicy weenie, so I'll be leaving the chili flakes out of mine. You know, I had a viewer though, once write in on another video saying that she was from New Mexico and a dish was not complete unless your tongue was on fire. So bless you, my spicy friends. Lastly, add the juice of three wedges of lime or lemon. 
I'm a particular fan of the lime over the lemon, but use what you have or what you prefer. Go ahead and clean up your workstation before returning to the ingredients and we'll just let that salt keep working for a few extra minutes. Now we're gonna get our hands in there. With your freshly washed clean hands, gently massage the ingredients. This will help draw out even more of the natural juice for the brine. If you've watched either my fermented red or green kraut videos, then you know that the massaging and the pounding, typically done with the dry salting technique, can be a bit aggressive. Not so with this recipe. We're gonna go in light since these ingredients are more tender fleshed than cabbage. It may look like I'm really grabbing and squeezing hard, but it's actually on the softer side. Massage for about five minutes. There's a lot of brine forming here. It's quite soupy, which is exactly what we want. Towards the end of the massaging, if I did grab hard and squeeze, a lot of juice will come out. At this point, it's ready to be packed in the jar. Wash three pint jars with hot soapy water. No need to sterilize, hot soapy water is sufficient. I'm gonna use one of these for loading the jar as to help prevent spillage. Plus, using a scooper is really helpful too. Take a couple of handfuls or scoops and drop it in. I like to use this little tart mallet to pack it down, but you can also use your fist as you see me do in many other videos. We want to press out any air bubbles, then repeat. With the next load of ingredients before packing down, add one large or two small bay leaves. Just stick them in there. Then finish compressing with your fist or your mallet. Leave about an inch and a half to two inches of space to the top of the jar as to avoid any overflow later on. Repeat the process with all the jars. Look at all that natural juicy brine. That's exactly what we want. Don't leave any brine behind. Pour any leftovers into the jars. Now we wanna hold the relish down, submerging it under the brine. We'll use a fermenting weight to help with this. I like to use these glass fermenting weights, but if you don't have any, you can use a rock instead, as I've also done for years. If you go the rock route, simply scrub the rock with hot soapy water, then boil it for sterilization. You only need to boil it before its first use. After that, just keep using it as your fermenting weight and simply wash it with hot soapy water before each future use. Same goes with the glass fermenting weight. Wash it before each use. Press it down firmly. It doesn't need to be submerged, but the ingredients below it should be. By submerging the ingredients under the brine, it protects the vegetables from mold and other possible microbes. So it's important that everything be and stay submerged during the fermentation process. There will be a few floaters and that's okay, just do your best. Next, place a coffee filter over top and secure it with the jar ring or use a paper towel with a rubber band. Place the zucchini relish on the countertop for a minimum of three days. A common question is, how do I know when the fermentation is ready? You taste test it. When it tastes good to you at the current flavor and texture, it's ready for eating. Starting on day three, taste test it daily with a clean fork, of course, until it's ready to your liking. This can be as soon as three days or as long as five to seven. Once it's fermented to your preference, put a regular lid on and place it in the fridge. It will last for weeks. However, if you feel it needs more time, put the weight and cover back on and leave it on the countertop for further fermenting. Taste testing it daily. If you taste test it now through the first 24 hours, you're gonna find it really salty and tart in flavor. However, by day two, those flavors begin to mellow and smooth out. So don't judge by what the flavor is today since it will be different by day two and forward. If you're excited to try making more vegetable fermentations, think about making one of the kings of all ferments, sauerkraut. If you're new to fermenting, it may not be as intimidating as you think. I've got a green cabbage kraut with carrot and ginger right here, and a red cabbage kraut with beet, pear, and fennel here. Now vegetable ferments are a type of fermentation called lacto-fermentation, but did you know there's more than just one type of fermentation? Find out in this video right here what the five types of ferments are, and I'll see you next time. Bye.